And welcome to another episode of Attack of Opportunity. This is Jose, and with me as usual, Andrew. In stereo! I actually realized I could record in stereo. I've been recording in mono this whole time. <laughs> please please it. excuse our professionalism. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, let's play the music. In stereo! <laughs> in stereo! I just have it like wiped from one yeah. channel to the other. Because when, cause, cause when you were like, you know you're recording in mono, right? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh, oh god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, not for real. Let's play the music. <laughs> Alright, Andrew. How's that? Today we're talking about something very special that we all think about. That we all have to face one day or another. <laughs> that we all think about, and I mean, let's be honest, we all wish for it at one point or another. <laughs> Especially this year, it's one of those like we want it. Please, <laughs> I can't take it anymore. 20, it's it's very thematic for twenty twenty. Yeah. It is. <laughs> In fact, it was uh, part, uh, partly inspired by twenty twenty. So now we're talking a about a little death. bit. Yes, Death, the American death metal band from Altamont Springs, no, 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 Florida, no, 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 founded no, 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 no. by 1983. And, 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 it's, by Chuck, by Chuck Schuldiner. Andrew, it's D&D Death. <laughs> Their debut album, Scream Bloody Gore, has been widely regarded. Nobody wants to listen to your metal knowledge. I do. <laughs> Record yourself and then listen to it. <laughs> when we have win, win, I'm being optimistic here because somebody has to this year. When we have a Patreon, I will do a special on, on like the history of metal. <laughs> it'll be it'll be like the like the, the, the 50 cent, you know, Patreon. Like here, you get this yeah. trash. I was like, oh, to Andrew. <laughs> oh god oh, I, I didn't ask for this is it's this like, a punishment <laughs> it's like that one year everyone got that one youtube album uh youtube album on their itunes do you remember that oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, i don't want this garbage but it's free i don't care this is trash yeah, that doesn't make it better speaking <laughs> of getting rid of garbage did you hear that microsoft is officially killing um internet explorer next year yeah 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 we have edge now Ooh. Yeah, ooh, oh, it's so different. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's actually not that bad. It's actually pretty decent. <laughs> Finally, it's like, it's like that comic of that guy. It's like I'm stupid faster. <laughs> <laughs> Got Internet Explorer. It was only used for one thing. Yeah, yeah. Download exactly. other, other <laughs> Here's a fun fact. Did you know that the only reason why Casey Anthony got off from her murder charge was because the cops didn't know the difference between internet explorer and firefox what do you mean they checked her internet explorer history for like you know uh nefarious yeah yeah yeah. like uh search history search. but they didn't check her firefox oh my god and if they looked under her firefox history they would have found stuff like hey google how do you murder kids <laughs> and shit like oh that. my god <laughs> yeah wow that's, so, a, that's a throwback i haven't heard about that one in a while that's a little little true crime trivia for you oh so have you, have you been on that uh, on the train again a little bit yeah mm. well yeah you know you know you know what gets me through through 2020 and uh the, my, my thoughts of death speaking of true crime <laughs> <laughs> what's up my drink of choice today what's your drink of choice today i'm drinking that einstock all girls is this that viking beer the yeah. viking beer yeah I keep seeing I'm, it. Like, for the longest time, I, I see it. I'm like, man, this is really nicely designed. Like, it's so pretty. I, I want to buy it six, just for the can. I got a six-pack while I was there one time. It was like a couple years back, and I just, like, I had one. I'm like, eh, fuck, you can have the rest. I'm, it's, it's not, not that it was bad, but I just, I felt bad about, like, <laughs> Did you, you know, really? Like, I don't remember drinking. It's a fine beer. I don't think it's, it, it like, was the years best. Ago. I don't think it was, like, the best thing in the world, but it's an easy drink, and it's refreshing as hell. Yeah, it didn't blow my hair back, but it was refreshing. So, yeah. that's, you know, my, my especially prior. With this, especially with this fucking heat. I mean, like my what's the word? It tastes like Viking sweat. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's Icelandic, so it's good. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, no. My parameters for what's a good beer are pretty low. It's like as long as it's cold and it tastes good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I'm having a Boddington's. Ooh, that was crisp, and that's gonna. That, oh, oh, 
Spill it all over the place. Oh, great. I, I fucking clipped the audio. I'm going to have a fun time editing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll level out eventually. Now that you're in stereo. Stereo. <laughs> Every time we say that, it's got to be like one channel <laughs> to the other. <laughs> Next thing, like you're going to so- be in color. <laughs> in technicolor. Technicolor. Oh, man. Oh, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so okay, let's talk about what we uh, what we um, came here to talk about Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. More specifically, Five oh. E. Oh well, I want to acknowledge something. We skipped a week. Yeah, we did. There, uh, we're, th- th- we're, we're trash happened. people. Yeah, a lot of things. Well, uh, <laughs> it's not that we're trash people. <laughs> it's just that things ha- life <laughs> happened. Yeah, unfortunately. So yeah, but but we're back. So, yeah, you know, we're, normal, normal we're here. Skip. We're in here in the flesh. Talking about beer for thirty minutes, just on, just as just as usual. Hey, welcome to the beer cast. Um, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> That's what D and D stands for, right? Drunk, drunk and drinking. <laughs> um, drinking Andrew, and no. driving is not. What this is about. <laughs> no, we don't do that here. <laughs> Attack of opportunity on the road. <laughs> yeah, and we're driving, and then you hear us drinking. Yeah, and then you hear boop. Ah, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you know uh, how fast you were going? How, how can I help you, Ossifer? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't drink a drive. That's not funny. That shit kills people. You know what else no, kills no, people? It's... Death. <laughs> people, people die when they are killed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Andrew, okay, so the theme for this uh, episode is death. All I know about it is everybody's afraid <laughs> of their character dying. Everybody's yeah. afraid of their character dying. Well... Um, is that Some for you? People you're, 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 you're a masochist. Um, well, no, because, okay, the reason why that is is because I have found myself a good couple of times, not not just exclusive to 5e, but just D&D in general, where, like, I come up with a character, and I'm like, oh, right, and then four sessions later, I'm like, oh, that other character looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just gonna, here I go killing myself again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, I just gotta, oh, geez, I threw myself down this bottomless pit. Oh, oh I'm no. So, I'm so silly. And you have the cleric re- reviving you. You're like, damn no, it. No, 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 don't bring me back. <laughs> Why are you I doing this to me, Steve? <laughs> just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm going to tell you what I know about dying in DMV. Okay? Very simple. When somebody hits you and you drop down to zero hit points, you are not dead. No. You're unconscious. Yes. Unconscious and and unstable. And unstable. Then we do the famous death saves. You have to do three of them. And you have to roll d20. Anything below a 10 is a fail. Anything above it is a a, a pass. Is it... Is it at the ten is a pass also, right? Yeah, ten yeah. up is a pass. It, it's all it's always going to be towards like the player's benefit. Right, right. Yeah. So Unless you do a mid grinder, huh? Unless you do a meat grinder. Well, uh. then then it's a fifteen. That's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seventeen and up. That's a pass. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> a crit fail is five to one. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, so you have to do three three rolls. Um. Well, actually, not, not just three rolls, but you have to roll for them. And then if you hit three fails, you die. Your character's dead. But 99, yeah. that's it. Yeah. E- yeah, the, yeah, the flat line completely. If mm. you roll uh, three passes you or three saves, you're good. Uh, you come back to one hit point. If you roll no. a crit, no? No, no, no. If you if you roll a natural 20, you come back with one if, hit point. That's what I was, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you just roll three passes, you're stable, which means you're you don't know, you no longer need to make death saving throws, and you have to, and then after that you start to regen health at a normal rate. Right. So it's like so it's like after like an eight hour period, if for whatever reason if you don't have a cleric or like a healing spell or whatever, after like an eight hour period, that's like a long rest for you, like and you stabilized and whatnot. Now does that does like the medicine check and all that stuff, a healer's kit does that help bring you to one hit point? No, that a a medicine. Okay, so a medicine check. It's a DC ten medicine check. All this stuff does is just stabilizes you. Okay. So that so that way, that way you don't have to worry about making death saving throws. It's not going to save your life, but it's going to help bring you a little bit closer to this side of the dirt. Right. Um. If you take damage after you're stabilized, you go back to making death saving throws. So right, that's, that's how right. that works. 
That's um, the other thing I know is if you take if you take so much damage that the leftover hit points are the same amount as your max hit points, you die instantly. That's right? how it was in 4E. Um, 5E is a little bit different. Um, we'll 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 get onto because that's massive damage. We'll we'll get right. onto that later. That's that's something completely <clears throat> different. Right. And, and the reason I don't know a lot about this is because I'm the nice DM here. And <laughs> the reason why, the reason why we don't know about this is because try though I might no one fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> That's my e for you, man. <laughs> but yeah, no. Also, I'm I'm the nice DM, so I don't like I don't like I'm. Yeah, Andrew is the masochist that likes to kill everybody. Well, I think the reason why um, I, I think the reason why that is is because five e is a lot less. Oh, hold on. Let me reposition my mic. Five e is a lot less grounded in reality mm -hmm. like it's a lot less grittier than the other editions and also on top of that um a lot of the optional rules and the dm's guide are optional rules whereas these were rules <laughs> in previous editions so or you know like massive damage is the biggest one i don't know about lingering injuries or anything like that but i know massive damage was a rule <laughs> like flat so. and here is just like a, if you want to do this yeah, if you want to do it. Well, there's a reason why it's like a, if you want to do it, because it's actually much easier to get massive damage in 5e than it was in 3.5. So, okay. I mean, do you want to touch on it? We've been kind of like beating around a bush. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> no, 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 I'm, uh, I'm just telling you what I know. I want you to like open my mind, I guess. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So let's say you're a level one wizard. Yes. All right. Oh, no. I don't want to be. You have <laughs> Seth. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the reason why we're going. You have exactly seven hit points. Bugbear comes, smack. <laughs> it just gives I feel you like, like a little. Right now, is this is this a reference? To <laughs> no, <laughs> just gives you like a little love tap. You you take seven damage. Okay, you're at zero, so you're gonna start making those death saving throws. The cleric comes over, makes the DC ten medicine check, and you're stable now. He doesn't have any spell slots to bring you back, but you're stable now. Or Inversely, if you use a healer's kit, you don't need to make a medicine check. You just do it. But you, it uses up a charge of the healer's kit to do that. Right. Which is a reason why there's a healer's kit, just in case. So, a lot of people don't realize that there is a thing called a healer's kit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I, there's I, a, there's I feel, a lot of kits that like people don't realize. They're... There's a lot of things in equipment that's not armor and weapons that I feel kind of falls by the wayside. That's also not ball bearings. <laughs> like That's true. there's there's more in the equipment section than ball bearings and alchemist fire um <laughs> and then you can also use the spare die spare the dying cantrip which to me honestly feels kind of useless because it's it's a dc 10 wisdom check for medicine which nine times out of ten the best person for medicine is going to be either a cleric or a druid and even at level one, they're going to have a pretty decent, or they should have a pretty decent wisdom modifier. So DC 10 is like nothing. So I, I feel like wasting a cantrip, a cantrip slot just to stabilize somebody is kind of like, mm. yeah, <laughs> you know, what is, what is the, what is the, the spare dying? It's just, it doesn't go down to zero hit points, right? Yeah. It just stabilizes somebody. It's okay, just like, like yeah. It, yeah. It's I can see, I, I can kind of see that like maybe being useful in like the first few levels, but that's about it. I mean, but like I said, it's only a DC ten medicine check. If it was like a DC fifteen, DC seventeen medicine check, I, I, I can understand a little trepidation. But it's it's ten. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, know. Sometimes we play it in roll twenty, and we don't roll anything higher than a ten all session. So. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, in in the same respect you can just cast cure wounds and the guy immediately comes back with what you cured him for. So, I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> so I, I don't know. It just seems like, eh, if I had a choice, I, 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 that, I don't know. That's just not me. <sighs> Any other questions? Are we done here? <laughs> <laughs> well, so far we talked about dying. Right. Specifically, just just actually just straight up dying. dying do you want to like? Do you want to specify the uh, the five E version of dying in one hit completely? Okay. So <clears throat> there's five E is actually really lenient in the fact that there is no way to straight up die in one hit. There is there is massive damage. Here, let me get to the page real quick. Hold on. Ugh. 
it, is that is that what I'm thinking about? Massive damage is is that right? Is that when you take so much damage you just it, die it, it, like straight up? It is. Hold on. Oh fuck! I turned to the wrong page. <laughs> what page was it? Two seventy-two. Okay, I turned to two seventy-nine. My bad. Okay, so <clears throat> so what massive damage is? Is if you take if you take damage from a single source that's equal to or greater than half of your hit point maximum, you have to make a DC fifteen Constitution saving throw, or and if you fail, that uh saving throw you have to roll in the system shock uh table oh yeah and that and then that stuff that's <laughs> like you roll d10 and one is you drop to zero hit points uh two to three you drop to zero hit points but you're stable and then it's like you're stunned and then it's like then you can't take reactions and then it's you know it's it progressively gets bigger and bigger <clears throat> inversely <clears throat> now remember zero hit points not dead dying there's a whole world difference between dying and dead. And 3.5, however, if you were to take 50 damage, flat, 50 damage from one attack, so like Wizard's Fireball does like 56 damage, yeah. anybody that gets hit by that and takes a full brunt of it has to make a DC 15 fortitude save, because that's what it was at the time. It wasn't Constitution, it was fortitude. They had, to, they had to make a DC 15 fortitude save. If you fail the save... The trauma from the injury kills you. No saving throw, <laughs> no death saving throw, no stabilization. You are dead. <laughs> like and this is, and this is no matter what level you are. Nope. No matter what level you are, if you take fifty damage flat from from one source of of like a hit or something like that, and you fail that fortitude save, you are dead. Like just straight up, because it's it's supposed to be like like the 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 mortal body can't take that right. much damage at <clears throat> one time kind of a thing and yeah. and, it, and it's like your body just fails and you die i assume that's kind of like <laughs> that's kind of like you know like oh your your arms are missing or like at the explosion the hole in your chest and not you know punched out your lungs or something like that yeah that's yeah that 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 would be like I mean, it, it, it would it would be an injury that is so debilitating that if you were to survive it, you would be like dr like eating the rest of your meal through a straw kind of a thing. You I know? gotta dig that. Yeah, and and for E, it was a little bit different. Um, it w it was pretty much the same thing as five E. Uh, is if but it has to do the amount of your hit point maximum after you've hit zero. That's, right. That, that, does that, make... that, that, that's what it was here. Yeah. No, no, no. Like it's <clears throat> no for for three. Not three point five. But for five e, it's half of your hit point maximum, which is why I said it's a little bit easier for you to encounter that. Because like, okay, let's go back to your <clears throat> level one uh, wizard. Wizard. Yeah. Seven hit points. You take four damage, which can be from anything like like a goblin rolled a little bit better than normal you take four damage also you go into system shock so i mean that personally you wouldn't, you wouldn't hit a man with, with glasses <laughs> per, personally that would be something that i wouldn't introduce until like a certain level like i'd be like after like level five then we can introduce the massive damage because it's like even like a barbarian like a barbarian with decent constitution is going to have like what 14 hit points at level one and seven yeah. hip seven you hip do max yeah well i mean level one you oh, level, yeah max. you're right Dad. yeah so i mean so even then seven seven damage from any single source is really not outside you know the realm of possibility so i i you know it like i don't know it, it, it it's an interesting thing but it seems a little too punishing early on. I would say, like, like I said, about level five. Like, okay, we're gonna introduce massive damage. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you guys know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking about. I, for some reason, because again, it, it never comes into play like in our actual. We just mentioned it during, during the games, like you know, just talking about it, but we never right. actually put it into practice. So I guess it's an optional rule, and I, I just thought it was like a, a basic rule uh, no. when it came to dying. All right, well, now I know that. I really but, wish they. I really wish they did have like some sort of like 
sudden death thing, like instant yeah. kill. Well, like like the, like the fifty hit points in one go kind of makes sense to me, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, because it's 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 different if you take an accumulative fifty hit points from like a bunch of arrows, but like one single swipe of a dragon's tail, like yeah, that will kill yeah. somebody. A little broken bones there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, now talk to me about injuries. Injuries. Okay, so That's something I have I have never ever ever dealt with in D anD. All right, so there's there's another optional rule. Literally the exact same page as massive damage, or actually it's the page before that, but whatever. You know, you're, you're whatever. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna have very very angry listeners. <clears throat> All right. So here's the thing. You're level 10 adventurers, and you guys went through uh Castle Ravenloft, and for all intents and purposes, you guys came out squeaky clean. <laughs> you know? Well, I know exactly. Like, you know, uh, uh like vampire spawn, like I don't know, like snaps small Drax's arms. He takes an eight hour sleep. Hey, he's fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but uh, so so on page two seventy two, there's a um, there's another optional rule that says if you um, if you get hit by an attack that is either a critical hit drops you to zero but doesn't kill you, or uh, when you fail a death saving throw by five or more, you get what's called a lingering injury. And and some uh, m- most of this, let's see, because you have to roll a d20. Yeah. Most of this does have a mechanical purpose. There's only one where it is no mechanical purpose. It's just a minor scar. But, but some of these are like, what's it? The internal injury seems kind of mean. <laughs> Which one? The internal injury five through seven. Oh yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> where anytime anytime you attempt to make a an action in combat, you have to make a DC fifteen Constitution saving throw. On a failed save, you lose your action and can't use reactions. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and then there's stuff that's like lose a foot or a leg, lose an arm or a hand, lose an eye. <laughs> you should have you should have given you should you should have given uh, Alex uh, eight and ten eight or eight, yeah eight, broken ribs broken ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I like the I, I like the uh, horrible scar one because that's I I really like the idea that you can have disadvantage on persuasion but uh, advantage on In, uh, uh, intimidation. intimidation because you got this like this nasty gash across yeah. your eye. Internal internal yeah. injury just sounds really mean though. You're right. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would do that to my body. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's like you got a fucking punctured lung. Yeah, I'm sorry. Bro, but dude. like losing your whole action on a, if, if the DC was ten maybe, but a fifteen like come on. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a five through seven, so that's not going to be like, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I don't see that being very, uh, lose well. nine. What does lose nine do? Wisdom perception checks. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. That'd be cool if I, if it gave <laughs> you have no, in, in range attacks. It does. It does? Yeah. It says it says you have disadvantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on sight and on ranged attack rolls, and oh. then it also says if you have no eyes left after sustaining this injury, you're blinded. <laughs> that kind of makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Just have a guy walk around with with an arrow in one eye, and he's like, "What's that over there?" <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Jesus Christ! It's just two arrows. Like, oh clacking. God! It's just like that guy that puts the little like bullet, the little Nerf yeah. bullets in his eyeballs. <laughs> 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 oh. oh that's so Jesus. gross Ugh. oh man <laughs> is there any like any other ways to like die and get hurt you know that's actually a really good question let me because because it did say it did say injuries that don't kill you outright so let me, maybe there is an instant death hold on I'm checking it up right now do 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 <clears throat> just because like I, I, again like i don't know man like in our, in our group like we we're very stubborn when it comes to dying like we very rarely get to an actual like hurting moment you know which oh, is yeah. why i'm changing the whole like uh full life next campaign yeah yeah I, I, you you understand now yeah <laughs> yeah it, 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 not, it not so much that it only i don't know like I can see now because, like, when I was the DM, and I was like, "Oh, you know, it's really nice. You guys get full health, blah blah." blah. But that does kind of take away the edge, a little it, bit, you know. Yeah. So I, like, in, in that it, respect, I I think I might have been too generous, honestly. I was actually very surprised you chose that because I thought you were gonna go with like just the regular rules of roll, 
you know, and re-roll once. Um, just because, you know, to do something different. I get, you, you got intimidated by the thing. No, because I, I heard that. Oh, yeah, no, there is an instant death roll. Shit. Okay, so. Yeah, you were right, actually. You were right that there there is one where it's like if if you reduce to zero hit points and the remaining damage exceeds your hit point maximum, then you instantly die. You there were you right go. about that. Yeah, that's the one I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. And never so, it, I've never have to deal with that in an actual game. But yes, I heard that one. So when you say massive damage, I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's the same rule. I just thought it was like an actual normal rule. It it seemed like what they did was that they just kind of took the concept of massive damage and then sort of split it up. Because because it used to be you take massive damage and you have to make a con save. Whereas right. this one, hey, guess what? You took 12 hit points and you, uh, or you took 14, whatever. You take this much damage, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. and, but, it, but it also gives you a little bit of a fighting chance because it's not just like, it's whatever remaining you know right has, so there's a li- there's that too right it can it lead to that has, moment where you're like oh my wait how much was that and then you start doing the math and like no 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 no, i'm not dead yet oh shit oh shit oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't worry i'll save you yeah i mean that that would be a really good reason especially like i said for a low low level party where you're like guys i'm at three health <laughs> somebody help me <laughs> <laughs> oh the poor wizard <laughs> because the dm rolled really good at the random encounter and now we <laughs> have to fight a, a green dragon wormling <laughs> <laughs> well that's also the thing it just comes down to the roll man sometimes you just yeah. roll those crits and you're like oh man this is a level one and like yeah. you want to you want to fudge it but like at the same time you're like no that way they get scared but then there, like there, you roll the damage and it's like oh shit i rolled really high on both sides there is there is a moment where you just have to be like all right, this is the yeah. whole point of the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it was. I think it was in Storm King's Thunder that I started realizing that because I was like, I don't want to kill him. I want to continue the story. You know what I mean? And so I was like, I don't think I ever did anything massive in the sense of like, oh, they were supposed to die, but they didn't. But I did like soften some of the blows. Sorry, team. I know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that now. But after that, like, I kind of like realized that I was like, wait. Then they they just killed everything. Like there was no like any. There wasn't ever a moment where they had to like legit fight for their life it was always like yes we can take down everything so like yeah. i get it i totally get it you know yes we're not we're not doing max health anymore we're doing rolling no, no, not rolling if you take if you get that one you take that one damn it uh- <laughs> no 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 no. i want to do i'm gonna do the i told you about this and you don't agree because you're evil but i'm gonna do the uh i roll. don't agree because i've learned <laughs> no 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 because i'm not doing health full health i'm doing your roll and the lowest value you can get is your average. So it's kind of right. like a little bit of both worlds, like picking the average and rolling. So right. That way, because, I, I, dude, there's nothing worse than leveling up and then you roll a freaking one. Especially if it's on a level that you don't get anything. It's yeah, like, hey, yeah. level level six. Let me roll for my health. Maybe I'll get, like, double, you know, like, oh, well, just a one. Okay, never mind. Womp. Yeah. But no, no, no. It's... It's you roll and then take your lowest value possible is the average. That's it. I don't know the average. Um, Fine. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna do the whole like you take you that give, one and you like it. <laughs> you were giving me some like weird calculus bullshit. Was like where you roll two HP dice and then you take the difference <laughs> between the two. And I'm like, no, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I take that one back too. No, no. It's just <laughs> it's just roll and take the average. Um, a, a group of mathematicians figured out what's the best way to gain health <laughs> via rolling in 5e and they figured if you roll if you just rolled all of your health for every subsequent level now at level one <laughs> and then divided by how many levels the campaign is on last <laughs> just roll a dice 20 times <laughs> here's a research paper I found in a <laughs> studies.gov <Yeah. laughs> Harvard Harvard wasted their time and Harvard.edu. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is this campaign going to level 13? I mean, it might. No, no, no. I need to know right fucking now. Is it going to level 13? Because <laughs> I'm rolling my hit, my hit dice. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so there, there might be a chance that this time around you guys can actually die. Hopefully. Also. <laughs> I was going through the book, and I, when I was reading it, I was like, man, these this first few encounters are kind of, like, really harsh. Then I started watching Roll20%, and the guy was like, 
they kept dying constantly. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm not changing that. So <laughs> I really hope it plays out like that. I mean, to be fair, the last fight in Dragon Heist was like, it was like, it was like I'm up, blam. <laughs> 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 I, I, I remember, I remember specifically, there was a moment where one of us got a natural 20 and then immediately got gunned down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that fight was pretty lame. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, it was. It's not you. We're not going. We're not getting into this. <laughs> we already talked about this in episode two, two through six. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> that was all of season one. That was a season one wrap up. Now we talk shit about Stride. That's that's the one. <laughs> episode seventeen. You know what? I just remembered something I didn't like about Dragon <laughs> Knight. <laughs> Hey, we have a caller right now. Like, hey, I listen about your Dragon House game. Uh, Excuse me, it can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like season eight of Game of Thrones. Like every time, like it, you like like you're going through, he's like, oh fuck, here's something else that pissed me off about. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> God damn it! Why did someone remind me about that? <laughs> oh man! <coughs> oh man! Yeah. yeah. So that's dying. How about how about bringing people back? bringing people back (laughs) that i mean um first of all you can't that's blasphemous (laughs) um on on sale now for (laughs) 12.49 we're not sponsored by them but please if you're listening to this (laughs) it's a really good game go buy it You still haven't finished Ghost of Tsushima, so don't tell me anything no, about that. Game. I know, I know. I be I be blasphemous. It's like, oh, you would like New Game Plus. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Andrew! Ghost of Tsushima, the freaking I'm, DLC I'm, is coming down. I, I'm back on Ghost of Tsushima. Calm down. <laughs> oh. So, any, anyways, bring, Jesus, bringing people back. Now that's a little bit trickier than, like I said, there's a whole world of difference between dying and dead. Once someone is dead, that's when what that happens healer, to their soul. That actually depends on the spell. Really? Um, yes, it really does. So let's go down the spell list that brings people back. Follow me. <laughs> Follow me. We're in a podcast. People can't see that. Can you? Please? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't see me flying off with a rainbow like <laughs> yeah. tail. All right, so. There is obviously there's spells that can bring people back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the so the first one I noted, it's not technically bringing you back. <laughs> it's kind of like preserving and that's gentle repose. Yep. Now, it is a spell, not a cantrip, but it is a spell. And what it does is that it pretty much makes you stop rotting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, isn't that because there is like some spells that specify the length that the person has been dead? Every every resurrection spell or what have you has a time limit. Okay. Um, obviously, the longer the time limit, the bigger the spell slot it needs. So if it's something like a low level party and for whatever reason, well, no, no, not for whatever reason, because Gentle Repose is a low level spell. So let's say it's like a level one to two party. And when your when your guys die, the cleric's like, "All right, it's like a three day hike back back to <laughs> back to town. There is a cleric there that I know is strong enough to bring him back. However, we can't have this guy liquefying on the way there. So so <laughs> it's really hot outside right now. <laughs> and I don't know why we decided to go adventuring in Arizona in August, but <laughs> <laughs> here we are. So let's do." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So so you cast Gentle Repose. I think it's a level one spell. You cast Gentle Repose on somebody, and it preserves their corpse for the next 10 days. So it's perfect, you know, perfectly, you know, it, it, story-wise, it would be like something like for a funeral or something. But there is a really neat mechanical purpose for that if you cast it within the first minute. And that links into the next spell, which is Revivify. So essentially like Vladimir Lenin, your comrade. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Per, per, hold the on, second level spell, by the way. Huh? Is it a second level spell? Yeah. Well, revivify. I think it's like. Is revivify a second level spell too? Oh god! Don't fact check me. Fact checking is gonna ruin this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nobody, please, nobody do that. Uh, it's the third um, level. 
Oh, okay. So, okay. So maybe you have a second level spell slot and you don't have a third level spell, yeah. which totally, you know, I, I can completely see that happening with a, with a beginner party. All right. So revivify is a third level spell. And what that is, is that you can bring someone back as long as they've been dead for one minute. This one is one minute. This is one minute. You have a one minute time frame from when that person dies to bring him back. And well, if you use gentle repose, it just kind of freezes that time. Exactly. If you okay. use gentle repose within that one minute window, that one minute window extends to ten days. Are you so sure now, it's not like? Are you sure it's not like? For some reason, when you say they, it can't be dead more more than, than one minute or whatever, I just imagine like for some reason their soul is being sucked, and they're if they get too far, you can't call it back. Wouldn't it, it specify like if as long as the the body has to decompose for X amount of time? It's it. it I've I've done a little bit of research on this because that it's it's a pretty popular theory on comboing revivify with gentle repose, and it does not specify anything about the soul willing to leave the body kind of a thing, mm. and it. in in the text for the revivify spell. So, ergo, a lot of people's like, okay, if you cast gentle repose, and it's something that's like if you cast gentle repose a minute and one second after they're dead, it that's doesn't it. matter. Yep. They're dead. You have to be a dick of a DM to do that. Or or you can't bring them back. Well, I mean, it could be something that's like, if it's like a turn-based thing. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. You know, like you have X amount of rounds to get to this guy before he is dead. (laughs) You know, but yeah, no, if it's something like out of combat, yeah, you're, you're a dick. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, but no, the popular theory is that if you cast gentle repose within that one minute, then that one minute extends to 10 days. And I have done the theory I mean, I, I have done the research on it, and that's the general consensus. Mm. Like, that's the best way to get the most juice out of Revivify. Yeah, because otherwise, what else are you going to use it on? Well, I mean, it's 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 essentially like a battlefield, like, bring them back up right now kind of a thing, you know? Like, not like a, no, are, I'm sorry, not, re, not a Revivify. Um, gentle gentle repose. repose. Yeah, yeah outside, outside of that, it's pretty much just like a hit... Um, Let's let's make them pretty for the funeral. <laughs> you know, kind of That's all the morgues use. <laughs> yeah, you know, or or um, the ones who flunked out of a uh, Clara uh, school. You know, there probably is actually a really good use for gentle repose. Now that I think about it, um, it could be it could be something for like a clone spell or what. Anyways, I'll I'll have to do some more research into it. it but, like but prevent but, a leech from a a leech from coming back. It could. I think there is something, or or you know what, you can prevent someone from becoming like a zombie or something mm. like that, or because right. because to create undead they have to be like dead and rotting, right? <laughs> so yeah, so I mean you know something like that where it's like you know like a high leader or something like that. He's well respected by the community, and there's a necromancer going around causing shenanigans and shit. Like no 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 no, <laughs> we don't want Vladimir Lenin to become a, a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> punches out through the glass <laughs> just like that simpsons yeah. thing yeah, here's the ussr all right awesome <laughs> um so revivify you can't now all these spells have a certain caveat um revivify you can't bring somebody back if they died of old age and okay. and it doesn't restore limbs so if they got caught in an explosion or something like that and it ripped off an arm, that arm's gone. What if you just have the head? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a talking head from, from Chizurama. For, for these, for a lot of these like early resurrection spells, it's kind of generally implied if like a vital part of them is missing, they're not going to come back. <laughs> so if they like, if they died by, by decapitation, they're not coming back. Right. <laughs> um, and it also costs one diamond worth 300 gold. A diamond singular one. <laughs> it can't be a bunch of diamonds totaling can't, 300. Can't, can't be a bunch. You can't have a bunch of diamond dust. No, it's got to be a single diamond. Where would you find that? Uh, literally anywhere at the end of a normal published adventure. Because I'm like, sure. here, here, you want some diamonds? Here's a bunch of fucking diamonds, diamonds. jewels, rubies, gold, silver. <laughs> ah, <laughs> just like <laughs> dump the Gatorade bucket full of diamonds. Is that, is, is that gift of a um, of a uh, Phine- 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 um, fuck that other show? Adventure time. With uh, yeah. 
<laughs> he's running in with a sword, killing everything. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Jake is like in the background, just picking up all the. Yeah, stuff. exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, it either that or you just gotta you just gotta hope beyond hope that the DM rolls really good on the loot table. Yeah. So, and this is this is a good reason why you should probably keep track, like rubies and sapphires, that kind of crap. That could probably fall by the wayside. I'm pretty sure there are material components for those for 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 some other spells. But if it if it's a diamond, you got to be like, okay, this diamond is worth. This yeah, much. diamonds are important <laughs> for like a lot of spells too. Yeah, like like if it's a diamond, give it to your cleric. <laughs> yeah, give it to your spellcaster. There you go. They'll they'll know what to do with it. Yeah, exactly. Which reminds me, should I keep should I keep track of all all that stuff in like uh, the next adventure? Yes. Because usually that falls like to the side like all oh, like so easily, and whenever somebody casts a spell, I'm like, ah, don't worry about the components. No, I wouldn't. I, if if it's something that's like, oh, it needs a twig off of a branch that was struck by, okay, yeah, that's that fine. part, whatever, yeah. yeah but with the it, common it, stuff like diamonds, if it if it has a monetary value to it, I would definitely keep track of it because that's that's the whole point of that is that you have to, right, you know. Cause like yeah whatever I have a bat wing and a little bit of like fur or some crap like that. Yeah, like, sure, well, I imagine whatever. a lot of that stuff is like you know like in Harry Potter when they go to like buy their supplies for school like as a common thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's what it says in the player's handbook. Like if you have a component pouch, it's just it's there. And right. in, in like if you want to, you can make it like sort of a social thing to like oh I'm going to go to the store and I need some I am Newt and stuff like that. Blah blah blah. Right. But it's like if it has a monetary value, you need to keep that shit on lockdown because all of a sudden <laughs> they, they look in their component pouch. It's like, oh, look at these diamonds worth three thousand gold. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do that next. Like this. <coughs> Excuse me. This time around, and keep an eye on like spells casters. Yeah, I mean, just general rule of thumb. Just if it has a monetary value, that's when you right. call them out on it. So, I mean. Yes, I'm probably going to be working against myself on that. But <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Take notes. <laughs> I'm going to cast this spell. Oh, well, do you have a sapphire worth? God damn it, me. <laughs> Once again, I bring about my own downfall. <laughs> the, whole, the, the whole part is just looking at you. It's like, bro, you want to? You want to talk about something, man? You want to open up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm my own worst enemy. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What else uh, is there? What else is there? What other spells? Right. Tell me the spells. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, damn it. Tell me the spells. <laughs> okay. So, Bastard. after. I'm going as fast as I can. All right. So after Revivify, you have Raise Dead, which I forget which level it was. I probably should have wrote down the level of these spells. I want to say it's like a level four. Um. So then, so then you have Raise Dead, which I put in my notes as the first taste of a cleric actively fucking with the balances of life and death. Fifth level spell. Andrew. It is a fifth level. Stop giving misinformation like that. Wow. I am. Um... Guys, I'm going to be announcing my retirement. Um, I Hashtag have, I cancel have. Andrew. <laughs> Mis- misinformation campaign. <laughs> hey, <laughs> cancel Andrew. <laughs> A bunch of people are like, why are we canceling this guy? He sounds awful. Oh, no, he just like <laughs> and there's, misinformed and there's us about one, a spell. And, and, and there's one guy that's like, I don't know, but fuck him. <laughs> yeah. That's what starts the whole... <laughs> And then it actually catches wind, and the next thing I know, I'm I'm being canceled for. Yeah, some you got reason. you got fire, and you know <sighs> Theresa broke up with you and okay. kicked you out. Of the house. You're she homeless. Can't, she can't handle the stress of the protesters outside my house <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing eggs at my car every time I try to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'll be a stinky car. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Nobody listened to our podcast before. <laughs> and somehow this happened. <laughs> Who is this culture? guy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but we're canceling him. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. All right. So Ray's dead. Um, it is. It's probably going to be like your go to resurrection spell because it's it's right in the middle in terms of like cost and time and stuff like that. Um, the person has to have been dead for only 10 days. So you got a little bit more time there. 
Uh, they can't be missing any vital organs, and it cures them of poisons and disease, but not curses, though. Interesting. <laughs> Doesn't do shit about curses, because <laughs> fuck them. Um, but what I think is really cool, outside of the fact that it costs um, a diamond worth 500 gold, 500 now, you know, raising the bar, I think what's really cool is that, one, the soul has to be willing <laughs> to come back. So if it's, if it's for, for instance, like it's, it's a player that died or not a player, <laughs> a player character that died. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> I killed a player on my first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anyways, if, if it was in self-defense, I was afraid for my life. <laughs> If, if a player, if a, I felt threatened, if a player character died, like, like, like for me, for example, like I said, like at the beginning of the episode, if my character died, I'm like, that's cool. I, I wanted to play a new character anyways. I would say like the soul has moved on or some crap right. like that. Like he made peace with his God or whatever. Um, and, or this is also like in a story kind of way, like you can't bring somebody back that doesn't want to come back. <laughs> right. They're in the heaven and they're like enjoying everything. And it's really nice right. up there. Yeah. Right. You're not fuck like, you guys. <laughs> like, like the paladin that made like the heroic sacrifice and then you bring him back and just fucking mitigate everything he did. <laughs> <laughs> that was his whole like life goal for that character. <laughs> he was like, no. Yeah. Like, like, like Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> yeah. He was getting like the, 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 the helmet of like, you know, his God helm or whatever. Yeah, like right exactly. before then gets pulled. Back. Yep, <laughs> it just gets pulled back. Um, but what's also really neat, besides all that, is that the caster and the person that comes back—no, sorry, the resurrected person—has a negative four penalty flat for for all the rolls. It's a because because it, it, the the text describes that bringing someone back from the dead after that much time is a like strenuous like uh experience like so it, the, it, wait it's it, so it's the caster or the or the person that came back um da, 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 da. the resurrected person oh. has a negative four penalty and every time they take a long rest that negative four goes down by one until it just disappears altogether i can th- kind of see that like the matrix yeah when exactly they, when they bring neo and he's like all like you know you have you haven't used your muscles or whatever. That's yeah, yeah. Is. Why do my muscles hurt so much? Because you haven't used them. Yeah, yeah. It, that, yeah exactly. Because your muscles have started to atrophy. I mean, I mean, effectively, you start to decay. What's the, <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the length on this one? Another length. The, uh, the time frame. Ten days. Ten days. Yeah. Oh yeah. So for, you, yeah. If especially if it's been like closer to the ten days, you're, you're stiff. Yeah. And crusty. And gross. Yeah. It, it says coming back from the dead is an ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. And Why is my skin so dry? I need some moisturizer. <laughs> moisturize me. I need shea butter. I just imagine. Just He's really sensitive to the sunlight, so they have him like covered with like sunscreen, a big old hat. Uh-huh. You know, Michael Jackson style. And he's just like walking around really carefully, trying not to touch anything too hard because it's going to like get hurt and bruised. <laughs> Just, just come back like, man, I got some fucking wicked cotton mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have, have water? <laughs> have you ever like woke up with your mouth open and mm-hmm. you have really bad breath? Imagine that for the next 10 days. Just, oh, God. <laughs> Please don't bring breath. me back. <laughs> I mean, the character just hates whoever bring him back. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so here's a little fun you fact. You did a shitty job. Speaking of hating to come back, if if anyone was to actually die in Curse of Strahd, there's actually magic modifications for Curse of Strahd. Um, so one of them was that if you use the spell Raise Dead or Revivify or anything that brings somebody back from the dead, they wake up screaming. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, like they come back like, ah! That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i thought i thought that was really neat never got to see it but you know i thought it was really neat um um but yeah no with ray's dead naturally if they are missing any vital organs they can't come back and i don't think it works if they died of old age i believe 
I think I think that's all. I think that's always like the one caveat. Like you you, you can only run away from it for so far, <laughs> or for right. so long. Uh, oh yeah, and you also come back with only one hit point. <laughs> so so you can die right away again <laughs> if you're oh, in the yeah. wrong if you're in the wrong place. Oh yeah, let's see. No, it doesn't say anything about uh, old age. Huh. Okay. Huh. 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 Oh yeah, and it, and, and, and it also it? it also says if the soul is at liberty to join the body. Also, oh, so, if it's like a trap in a, I don't know, special place. Well, there's well, a where would there, your soul be trapped? There's a um, there's a spell called I think magic jar. Or something like that. It's it's a necromancy spell, and you like you trap someone's soul inside of it, and they use it for like lich purposes, kind of a thing. So yeah, doesn't, you know, doesn't that, the hexblade warlock also do that? Do that? There is certain class features I know that can like obliterate like, a soul. Yeah, or like bring <laughs> like 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 attach it to your to the blade or something. Oh, I, I feel like we read that, and like we thought it was so badass. Oh, you mean. know, what? I th- I think you're right. I think the hexblade does do that, which I mean. If that person's dead, then they are D E D dead. Yeah, that's it. D E D E D. Uh, so hold on. You know what? I think you're right. Hold on. I'm looking. I'm looking it up now. Let's just let's just listen back to our warlock episode one hour <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Two hours later. No. <laughs> no, it turns out we were wrong on that. Hold on. Exploit. No, not celestial patron. You're lame. <laughs> Da, 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 da. You look faster. Look faster, Andrew. Yep, <clears throat> it's a curse specter. At level six, you can curse the soul of a person you slay temporarily, binding it to your to your service. Badass. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't come back. <laughs> of so. Oh man, fuck you. <laughs> All right. So then after, uh. All right. right. Yeah. So after Ray's dead, you got reincarnate, which, <laughs> which I wrote down in my notes. All right. So your rogue failed to spell the failed to spot the glyph of warding, and now they're painting the ceiling and walls of the dungeon. <laughs> Are you talking from a personal experience there? A little bit. <laughs> so what reincarnate? Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So reincarnate. It is, I want to say it's also a fifth level spell too. It's like, it's actually lower than resurrection. Huh. Um, but it, it has the same monetary cost as resurrection, which is a one single diamond worth 1000 gold. But the trick of it is, well, there's two little caveats. One, it does not matter if the body is whole or not. It's kind of assuming the body is not whole. That's why you're <laughs> using it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and okay, so it doesn't assume the body's whole, but there is a very good chance you're not going to come back as the same person that you were before. Really? Because, yep. Yeah. Under reincarnation. So, so when you reincarnate, I think the DM rolls a D100, and depending on that D100, you change your race. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Same so character. Some, same character, like same class, same everything else. But it's a. It might be a different race. So if it's a different race, does it? Does like do the like uh, racial traits? Do they switch? Yep. So if there's you like lose. a plus to wisdom or something, does it? You lose that yep. and you gain whatever so, else. So let's let's say for instance, let's say for instance you were like a an elf rogue, okay, and you would have that plus one to dexterity and then um, I think like a plus one to wisdom if you're a high elf or something like that. Yeah. Or or like a plus one to wisdom if you're no no it's plus one to wisdom if you're a Wood elf. Let's just stick with that. So you die, you get reincarnated, and then you come back as a as a uh, dragonborn. Well, you lose you lose that dexterity and wisdom, and then you get that plus two, plus two to charisma and plus one to strength. Uh, yes, that sounds about right. Yeah, and then you also lose like your low light. Uh, sorry, your dark vision. Your inability to be affected by sleep and stuff like that so so it's essentially you i mean it's you're, you're changing your race like that's gonna be a bitch if you're using like dnd beyond or something <laughs> it yeah <laughs> but i mean 
I have I have had a really interesting experience with that personally, where I was in a campaign and I was a human sorcerer or something like that, and I got killed, and the party did not have the resources for a full resurrection. So they're like, okay, we're gonna reincarnate him. And I'm like, oh man, you better roll good. And I came back as a fucking half leg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, guys, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like super tiny and stuff now. <laughs> and it's kind of, I, I, I just like I just, I can only imagine like the phone the phone the fun you can have like role playing like being used to being tall and then having a halfling and like always like messing up like your depth of, <laughs> your depth of field and like you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like 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 none of your shirts fit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 neat. It 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 definitely throws like a lot of like things into the mix. The only problem is it's a druid only spell. I can see that. So I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> At least not with me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, poor druid. <laughs> All right. Um, and then there's, and then there's actual resurrection. Now this is like the real, story. this is like, the ser- yeah, this is like the serious, like heavy duty, um, like revival. So resurrection, it is. They have to have been dead for the last century. Damn. <laughs> one, yeah, one hundred years. Um, they come back, all their limbs restored, uh, cured of poisons and diseases, except for curses, for whatever reason. I don't know why. <laughs> like, like they're what still if, like, like the curse to find a character, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, it could be, yeah, like a legendary werewolf or something yeah. like that. So, um, but the, I believe, yeah. So, so using resurrection as a caster is just as big of an ordeal as bringing back the person. So that negative four penalty is now applied to both people. So oh. so now the caster has that negative four penalty and the resurrected resurrected person has that negative four penalty as well. So you you do this while you're in like a town and you're like just chilling you, for a you, week or so. You do this when you have time. Yeah. <laughs> when, when there is downtime. You do this in the middle of combat, you are playing a risky game. Yeah, man. negative four is no joke. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh wait, hold on. No, no, no. My bad. My bad. The 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 target, the resurrected. My bad. The resurrected takes a negative four penalty. The penalty is higher for the caster. What um, is it? it is casting the spell res- to restore a life that has been dead for one year or longer taxes you greatly. Until you finish a long rest, you can't cast spells again, and you have disadvantage <laughs> on all attack rolls and ability checks and saving throws. <laughs> Yeah, I can see so, that. Just, like, all right, guys, I'm gonna go take a nap now. <laughs> just like I hurt. Yeah, it hurts. It's like when you sneeze really hard, like your diaphragm is like fucking. Oh, fucked. yeah, like that. <laughs> you can't move you your throw shoulder. Your back yeah. out. <laughs> all right, this is it for me today. Somebody turn on the TV. I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> Somebody get the heating, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm getting cramps. Um, and oh yeah, and it also has a casting time of one hour. So. There's no feasible way you're doing this in combat. Hopefully you're Unless not doing it in like a very dangerous temple on top of a mountain. Unless it's like, oh, like our backs against the wall and we have to resurrect this guy right now. I'd be like, you guys going to have to handle with everything that's coming at us. I'm sorry. One yeah, hour God. later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty epic I mean, though. Like, like standing your ground until like the wizard comes back. Oh Ooh. yeah. That, I mean that that would be something if I was a DM because I mean like a lot of a lot of dungeon rules are you roll for a random encounter every yeah. I think it's like ten minutes inside of a dungeon so it's yeah. like all right you got six rolls here we go bam bam mm-hmm. bam bam and then it's like it's like whatever it happens if there's combat that cleric's out yeah like don't even don't even bother initiative you know but keep them there for the battle so that way you can fucking stab them <laughs> 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 you know so yeah that actually. That would be a really interesting session. Yeah, I would yeah, love it would. To see Especially that. if like they're not like, oh, you like a couple of people like man one door, the other one like I don't know. It's just I cannot see like a, a lot, a lot of opportunity with like just the creatures of the dungeon trying to like besiege this 
room or whatever in hell, mm-hmm. like a tomb or something. And, and the cleric's like busy, like oh, yeah, because they have to cast like it for an hour, thing. and then they're out. Yeah, and then they have to take a long rest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so damn. That's, that's, but the thing that's grueling. I will do it with like a lot of like low level creatures. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So they feel the better. That's cool. That's a cool oh, thing. Yeah, like 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 a bunch of goblins or kobolds. Yeah, just, like, like yeah, they, they're the killing them no problem, but there's so many of them. You know, but there's, but there's like God, there's so many of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere. I'm doing my part. <laughs> but. <laughs> but the good part is the good part is once that person's resurrected, yeah, they're going to have that negative four, but they come back with full hit points. Yeah. So, so I mean, effectively, if it is like a wizard, like you said, just like they come back and fire bomb. Yeah. <laughs> That'd like, be epic as hell, dude. That'd be so cool. Completely solve the problem. I'm going to write this down real quick. <laughs> Resurrect against the clock. Yeah. <laughs> Two lines. <laughs> Oh, you're pretty bomb, oh Jesus. That would be a that that would definitely be a session people would talk about. Where, <laughs> where it's like, God damn it, if I if I had just did a better grapple check on that cobalt. Yeah. <laughs> like slippery little fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you little shit. It'd be really fun to, to do like at a not not necessarily too high level, but like I don't know, eight or seven or so. So people have like the double hits and stuff like that. So they can take like double like creatures out at the same time. It, it it would be something where it's like, because Resurrection's a fairly high level spell. I think you had to be like level ten or something to cast it. No, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's a fairly high level spell, so it would probably be something like the NPC or like you have a scroll of Resurrection kind of a thing. And it, oh, that would be even better. It's like okay, we got one fucking shot yeah. to get this right. <laughs> yeah, it's a, seven, a it's, a seven, it's a seven level spell. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have to be pretty high level to cast it. So yeah, yeah. The party came across the scroll of resurrection. They got one chance, yes. one shot. <laughs> like this is it. Mom's you spaghetti. <laughs> Can you imagine like an hour casting time and then they fail their arcane check? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> there's a wave of kobolds coming at them. <laughs> no! Yeah, Jesus and, and Christ! However, if the fail, if the fail, if the spell fails, then they don't get the penalty. So uh, at least there's that. You know. Yeah, there's that. All right. How so, about how about the, the the greatest of all resurrections? True resurrection. True resurrection. True <laughs> resurrection. It's a ninth level spell, and it requires a sprinkle of holy water mm-hmm. and diamonds worth twenty five thousand gold. What the fuck? Also, well, I just I'm just curious as to like how does this universe arcana magic know the value? <laughs> that a diamond is going <laughs> for like what if the okay. market just tanks right now and you can't find- <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's like the like it's saturated with diamonds yeah like, like, like you we- have this big diamond which is obviously twenty five thousand gold but but nobody's gonna pay you twenty five thousand gold does a spell don't that <laughs> look look the dow jones is really bad yeah. right now i know i know i know he'd be really useful for this next next mission but Look, man, the stock market just can't handle it right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that uh, the, the the diamond company? The bars. The bu- bu- oh yeah, uh, uh, the the beers. The beers, yeah. The beers. <laughs> the beers. <laughs> yeah, like I was, I, I'm just I'm just so curious about that. What if like you know like nobody has a diamond, but you have a tiny little one that people will pay you millions yeah. of gold for? You know. <laughs> just okay. Look, hold on. <laughs> everything was fine before that fucking drought company flooded the market with diamonds and now diamonds are useless <laughs> so there you go that's, like, that's that's the food for thought the next campaign you have to know the value of the market for a diamond. oh yeah. oh that actually and that you gotta roll really, <laughs> keep rolling for see if it goes up or down that would be a really good reason to have like things appraised and exactly stuff like that. yeah that would actually. But if, what, what you if know, you go be, to an official appraiser that's at a game, a, a buddy of yours, and he's just like, "Yeah, don't worry, this is twenty five thousand gold." It's, it's not. It's not but it's like he officially <laughs> signs it. Like, does the Arcana world knows that? Like, is that like the? Like, when does the value magically attach to the diamond? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you have to check. You have to check Nasdaq mm-hmm. to make sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> Guys, hold on. We got <laughs> we can, we got to buy more stocks. It's only 23,000. Yeah, we can't right use it now. right now, but I'm pretty sure next week it's going to go back up the value. <laughs> you see the cleric like like listening or like watching Mad Money <laughs> like yeah, yeah. really close. <laughs> you like the check. scroll bar at the bottom one. <laughs> It's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. We gotta no, do it now, we gotta fuck. do it now. It's, gonna... it's a fucking bear market, god damn it. <laughs> sell, 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 sell. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that would be, that That would be like, it's too real. Yeah, we can't do this. <laughs> anyway, so true resurrection, you 25,000 gold. However, hold on. It go, going back to a little bit like the appraised thing, that would actually be a really good reason to be like, oh, yeah, you got a diamond. How much is it worth? Like, you don't fucking know. You're not a diamond person. That is true, because we, we tend to just tell the monetary value of all the jewels that they find. I think from now on, I'm not going to do that. I think I'll just be like, you found a ruby. Yeah. And like, oh, is it is it valuable? I mean, it's kind of bigger. It's, than it's like one more thing got. to keep track of, but I think it'll be like really interesting to like, especially, yeah, I think so especially too. if there's spellcasters in the party. Otherwise, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, if it, if it's like for whatever fucking reason, it's like all fighters and yeah, yeah. sure, whatever. Not yeah, yeah. Here you go. Here's a whole bunch of fucking sapphires. Yeah, that'd be really <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think that would. Hmm. That way they can't use it until like after they go back to town or whatever. I want to say in some of the earlier editions, or they hire an appraisal appraise. that follows them through every mission. <laughs> a jeweler, a jeweler. you, <laughs> jewel <laughs> <a> little... man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be a really cool reason to have like a what's it. Would a, like a would an artificer like a, do like, that? Maybe that'd be cool, like a background for an artificer. Like, oh, I just deal there with jewels, is, dude. The guild artisan is a background. You can have that. that True. Hold, there you go. Hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. I think I have an idea. Hold on. I'm gonna look up the guild artificer background, and I think you can totally do that. <laughs> But I want to say in the earlier editions, there actually was like an appraise skill, and it like it worked for like magic and mm-hmm. stuff too. Like we we like identify magic and stuff, but you could also be like, oh yeah, this diamond's worth blah blah blah. So, oh man, oh I hope I'm right. Uh, Let's see. It's a background, right? Yeah. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> Guild membership. That'd be really cool, though. You can you can be a member of the jeweler guild, so you can like say like, "Look, I don't know what the value is, but I know a guy." <laughs> kind of a thing. Like you can pull the "I know a guy" yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, really so, neat. Like, there you go. That, Role playing opportunities, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's just it really all depends on how much like take this much info and then dissect it. Like, yeah, how much do you yeah, want yeah, yeah. to like dispense out? All right. Anyways, going back, going back to true. So you come back. So you you come back from the guild with your buddy, and you have a big smile on your face because you figured out that the market recently has been uh, very barren, and you can't find many many diamonds. So the tiny little diamond that you had in your pocket from, from the past uh, dungeon that you went to explore is actually worth instead of the usual five hundred gold pieces, it's worth twenty five thousand gold pieces. And now you can cast True Resurrection. <laughs> That's the second time I said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and in stereo. In stereo, <laughs> the channel's like <laughs> switch the channel. <laughs> now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. <laughs> Anyways, um, so you touch a creature that has been dead for no longer than two hundred years. Two count them. Um, if the creature's soul is free and willing, again, the right. creature comes back perfectly, and it's no like penalty? No penalty, no penalties to the caster, no penalties to the resurrected. It is a perfect, like, hey, I'm back. Hey, I would have begged <laughs> for a level nine spell, yeah. Yeah, and let's see. Um, and the biggest difference between this and resurrection is that resurrection does not work on an undead creature. So, like, if it's a zombie or a vampire mm-hmm. or a wraith, resurrection is not going to work on them. True resurrection, though, you cast true resurrection on a wraith, they come back as the person that they were before. Really? Yes. So as if we would have if, if we would have casted true resurrection on Strahd? He would have came back as a as the man that he was before he became Holy a vampire. Shit. Yep. But one little caveat, he died three hundred something years ago. That's true. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's where ha ha <laughs> I got you. Fuck you. <laughs> that's what that's what the book's like, ha ah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's at fifty thousand gold pieces well, worth of diamonds is that 600 well, here, years or 400 okay years? okay i'm gonna i'm gonna peel back the curtain a bit you remember that ability that casimir wanted yeah it was true resurrection with no time limit oh so you could have brought back shit. you could have brought back 
anybody. Nobody I got have, that. Nobody got it. And and the thing about it is, I have heard people, I have heard stories of people getting that ability and it's like, I'm gonna bring back the fucking dragon and he's gonna help us in this dragon. fight. <laughs> the dragon, the Argonvost. <laughs> Oh I'm going, shit! I'm gonna bring him back, and then and then I've had like I've heard some people's like I'm gonna bring back Strahd's brother, and he's gonna help us and stuff like Why that. Why didn't yeah. we think of that? That would have been fucking epic. I, I honestly I had stats in mind if you were gonna bring back Strahd's brother. <laughs> what if I just ran up to Strahd's face and just cast it? It wouldn't have worked on him uh-huh. because it, it it was like um I actually know it might have. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, this is my castle. <laughs> it belongs to me. Oh, by the way, the um, other day I was thinking about like what happened to Vesemir after the uh, after uh, Barovia, and he actually didn't go back because he couldn't face what he has done. Um, he couldn't go back to his family that way, so he stayed in Barovia and actually bought the castle. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's now the Lord of Ravenloft. <laughs> I mean, he didn't really have to buy it. There was nobody there. Well, nobody he, he, wanted he, it. He sat he on the, the castle. Yeah, he claimed the castle. <laughs> he became like the Lich King from World of Warcraft. Where yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like I, I have to sit here so nobody claims it. <laughs> Pretty much. Anyways, but so, yeah. So True Resurrection so, just brings you back completely fine. No penalties, right. nothing. No penalties whatsoever. And the best part about it is, is that Resurrection, I believe you have to have a Remain. Uh, or the remains of somebody like a like a bone or like mm. a finger or some crap like that. So we had the scroll of fucking oh my god! Can we go back? Can we rewind and go back there? Nope, too late. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to wait like ten plus years, like long after people have forgotten about it. <laughs> what if what if each one of us got the thing and then we revive the brother, the freaking dragon, and turn Strahd back into a normal person and then kill Strahd? I mean, you could have. That would have been really anticlimactic, but yeah, you could have. <laughs> so, anyways, so so while resurrection, you need like a part of the person that you're resurrecting. Yeah. True resurrection, as long as you know the person's true name, like no pseudonyms, no nothing. As long as you know the person's true name, you can bring them back, and and and, and they and a whole brand new body will show up within ten feet of you. For some reason, they had to <laughs> specify. That's like. <laughs> they just show up <laughs> so so that that would be really neat if it's something like oh we're gonna cast true resurrection we need to bring back this like legendary warrior it's like oh well his name is rickard the invincible no 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 what's his last name uh, i don't know yeah <laughs> you know, he's just part of a legend we don't know his actual name <laughs> like, Damn now it. we have to like now we have to go through all this genealogy bullshit <laughs> let me come uh, let me contact other plan. Oh, I failed. I've gone insane now. <laughs> <laughs> oh so. man! Is there any anything else that uh, that can bring people back besides those spells? Create undead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, not on. Okay, bring them back alive. Bring them back alive. I think that's that's honestly that's it when it comes to like resurrecting. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, there's stuff that's like power word heal which caps you off perfectly. But in terms of bringing you back, that's it. It's all, except for the Druid, <laughs> the clerics get all of the resurrection spells. Um, now outside, outside of magic items, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure there's magic items that can, that can bring people back. And the, naturally there's spell scrolls and stuff like that as well. Right. right but right. yeah. So all but in terms of spells, it's all clerics, baby. <laughs> I cannot believe we didn't fucking bring by that. I didn't even think of that man i have heard a lot of cool theories on what have people have done with that spell like like there was someone's like i'm gonna bring back strad's mom and have her scold him <laughs> <laughs> that's right because the buddies were in the freaking castle mm-hmm. oh shit dude that's awesome yeah. oh yeah oh yeah and another thing you guys never investigated strad's brother's tomb which if you did you would have found a plus two set of heavy armor <laughs> <laughs> Where was this tomb? It was it was the directly opposite of Strahd's tomb. It was the one that was like all really white. Oh, and you're right. Like we that. didn't we didn't go there and, anyway. And you guys like ah fuck it. <laughs> it's like past right. Up. And I'm like all right. <laughs> hey man, Can you, it would have made the last fight even easier. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? Then <laughs> then somebody would have had like 25 AC or some bullshit. I would have like given that. it to Ryan. You would have not. Yeah, I know you him. would have. <laughs> and he would have had 20. He, he I would have been behind AC. Ryan the whole time. 
<laughs> he would have been like literally bulletproof at that point. Actually, no, because you fucking used that thing that got him to beat the shit out of me. Talking, uh, hold on. Talking about talking about this this events. Um, let's talk about the main thing. We fucking finished Curse of Strahd two Yay! weeks ago. I think it was. Um, I don't know. It, it all feels like a fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fucking epic. Like the last episode, you can find it on YouTube. But it was just because Andrew's like, oh, you know, it's gonna be just a fight with Strahd. It's probably gonna be like an hour or so, maybe. Nope, a it full was, fucking session. It was actually a three hour long fight. It did not feel like three it hours. It did not that feel, a, not even. That was the fastest three hours of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, it was fucking epic because my favorite part of the whole thing was the fact that you fucking used Ryan against us. Cause we, 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 I, somebody buffed up Ryan or something. Like he was like super beefy, like, Every time gonna be able... you buffed him up. Yeah, right? he, he buffed him up until so nobody was... I don't think even Straw was able to, like, take a chunk of him or anything. And then I'm like, yes, we got this. He's going to go in there, take all the hits, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nope. That's, I think Straw's first round, he, like, charmed him. And he uh, and Ryan, Ryan fell, uh, failed his, he, uh, his he wisdom. Used the, he used the spell Dominate Person. Dominate and all Person. I, and I was like, Howard, make me a wisdom saving throw. He's like, okay. All right. And then I just muted everybody else. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> I'm like, all right, so here's what you're going to do. Um, you're going to beat the shit out of Vesmir. And you're going to you're going to get that sun sword from him. He's like, OK, cool. And then I just unmuted him. <laughs> he almost, bro, he almost took me down. And, and, and like the thing is that to snap him out of it, I guess it was to actually hit him. Yeah. Well, so how do you hit he, somebody that has like 20 freaking AC? He had 21 AC 21 at that AC. point. Yeah, yeah, and, and and how the spell worked was that every time you every time he takes damage, he gets to make another wisdom saving throw. Right, that's the but thing. But the problem too. with it is that wisdom saving throw DC was really fucking. What was high. it? It was like uh, eighteen, I think it was. And his Which, wisdom, I mean, he was not the wisest of the wisest. <laughs> for for a fighter, that means you got to roll real good. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> so. eventually he snapped out of it. But holy crap, I was like, oh no, this is going I, south. Because I I, I, I I remember we spent. We spent like an hour talking about the tactics of like how we're gonna take down Strahd. We're like all by the door before the fight started. We're like, okay, who's gonna do this? We had all this thing planned out, and as soon as the fight started, it just went to shit instantly. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no plan ever actually makes contact with so the enemy funny, or survives every, contact. Everybody, I remember it's like, okay, you guys ready? You know what you have to do? Okay, let's do this. And then like we roll initiative, and it was like the initiative was in the in a, in a way that it was against us. So nothing and then, like <laughs> slowly fell apart, <laughs> and, which was and, which was great. And it was for, like for a moment there, I was like, oh, man, we might not actually kill this guy because <laughs> holy shit, moving through well, walls it, and doing all this other stuff like holy crap. I mean, it was like it was like in love. I was like, I'm going to cast fireball and Strahd counterspells. It. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and she's like, shit, I feel so bad for her because she like every every high level spell she had you just got like. Well, because like, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, she has how many spell slots? Like, what, three? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and what do we learn about playing a warlock? Always use counter spell. <laughs> I'm gonna but write then, that down. But then, but but then, my favorite part was like, because it was Strahd's turn. Mm -hmm. He did dominate person. And then it was immediately Wrighton's turn. I'm like, and and like Howard's like, okay. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to hit Vesemir. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he was hitting like a fucking mule. It was like, like what? Like 27, yeah. like constant, like, oh my God, dude. I went down. Well, no, no. The, the first round, he's like, he used his war hammer. He's like, okay, this isn't working fast. Enough. I'm going to bring out my, <laughs> my plus two great sword. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm just going to let them kill each other. <laughs> yeah, that, it, that was essentially what it was. <laughs> And then and, the rogue couldn't and, get close enough to actually do like any damage. And and the best part about it was was that the cleric was blind this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so so when he came back, he just saw Vesemir right and just beating the fuck out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, the the cleric went blind. Uh, the warlock got all her uh, high level spells uh, 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 canceled out. The rogue couldn't fucking get close enough to get a, a critical hit. And the two ones that were doing damage. We're like we're fighting each fighting other, fighting each other. Because <laughs> like Vesemir, instead of running away, he's like, "No, fuck this," and he just like smacked. Him back. <laughs> but then I think I think the real big turning point uh, after after like right and snapped out of it. The real big turning point was when Alex 
had small jack to use that prismatic spray. Oh, wait. Oh, yes. Like, I remember. And, like, blasted everybody with it. <laughs> I remember Jesus, that. That did some fucking damage. At one point, I was like, dude, just fucking throw that helmet. Oh, because he had a, what's the name of the helmet? The crown I had? Oh, it was like, it was like the helmet of, like, bedazzlement or some bullshit. Right, which had, like, all these jewels with different, like, spell effects. And I'm like, bro, just grab all of them and throw it as strong. <laughs> one of them has to just. Hit. Just grab the whole helmet. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just watch as this thing goes up in a, uh, the helm of brilliance. The brilliance. Yeah. And just watch as, as Castle Ravelov goes up in a mushroom cloud. <laughs> <laughs> as like 18 fireballs ignite. <laughs> <laughs> they felt they, they the the windows in Kresk got blown out from the aftershocks on that. Yeah. Oh man, it was epic. It lasted, it lasted three hours, but you're right. It felt like fucking twenty minutes. And then, yeah, it, uh, there, at what there point? Was no, at, at what point did you know to run away? Like, what made you run away? Because for the like, what I remember is we were fighting it, and we, I thought we were losing the whole time. And all of a sudden, he just decides to fucking fly out. The point that I decided to run away was when he was taking more damage than he could regenerate because he is a vampire. So he was regenerating and I was I I thought I was being pretty smart about it because like every time the vampire starts his turn in sunlight, he takes 20 damage. Right. But huh, legendary actions, he gets the fucking move. move around, yeah. yeah. So he was regenerating pretty freely. But then once his two like little cohorts got knocked down and he was getting like like Thanks. uh yeah, when he was getting like piled on, I'm like, okay, things are turning against me, and then that's when I decided, like, okay, let's let's kind of book it, and you know, we'll we'll have him eat Gertruda <laughs> for, <laughs> to get some health back and whatnot. And I like how like when we were up there and he like flew back down, I was like, oh look, our our statue friends. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was that was a pretty epic fight. How, if you don't mind me asking, what was the health uh, on him? He had a lot. <laughs> more than 200 was, yeah it was more than 200 jesus okay i figured because like holy crap man we were hitting pretty hard and it was just like nothing and you're like yeah no he's fine i'm like what, <laughs> like, what the well uh, i mean i also wanted to no sell it so that way it seemed intimidating i wasn't oh, gonna okay. have him be well i mean because because that way when you do see him like getting hurt and reeling from it then you guys are like yes we're actually hitting him like you know like yeah no you it, know kind of like yeah, you it know. felt like that. Like, what was there any like super like powerful spell that you didn't use with us, or like did you just the go dominant, all out? The dominate person was the most powerful spell I had. I, <laughs> I, I definitely like like just like opening salvo, like the most powerful thing I got. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm Dude, like, no, I am going to use that. On the that fighter. that's that's slowed us down for a long time. Yeah, because if you if you, if you would have used that, I'm pretty sure we would have like at least it would have been like an hour less. I I, I I am really glad that worked out the way it did because it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this on right, and I know for a fact because he's a fighter, he does not have a good wisdom right. save, and and he has been getting buffed this entire time. So, yeah, let's twist this, <laughs> let's turn this around <laughs> and see how this worked out, and it worked out it beautifully. Was, it was fantastic. Yeah, so I yeah, fucking it, it, it. it was. I, I think that was like one of the best endings that I've seen, including like my own, because like it was like an actual like fight, fight. Because like again, uh, going back to it, Waterdeep was not that like ultimate, you know. Whatever. Um, yeah, I remember fucking uh, Kristen one shot um, the bad guy in Lost Minds of Fendelver, mm -hmm. and then Storm King Thunder was like a pretty decent fight with the dragon. Um, so that will be like the only one I have, but like the shot one. And mainly because I was a player, it was pretty fucking epic. I just imagine I was like flying after him when he jumped out the window and like, it was so fucking cool. Well, I mean, there were, there were some things that I did have to do to make the fight a little bit more interesting. And I mean, I'm, eh, fuck it. I'll just go ahead and say it. I mean, like the armor, he wasn't supposed to have the armor, but I'm like, the armor's in the castle. Like right. why wouldn't he, why wouldn't he wear his armor right. to like the final fight? Like that doesn't make sense. Why would he why would he go into the final fight wearing like clothes? Was that was <laughs> like that, was that like a special armor that we could have find also? It was what it was was that it was supposed to be like um, you, but you guys never encountered. There was actually a lot of places you guys didn't encounter in the castle. Um, there was like a whole floor you guys didn't go to. 
for pretty good reasons. The place is built like a maze. Um, but like the armor was actually like enchanted armor that was like walking around and patrolling like certain oh, parts cool. of the castle and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so if you would have encountered it, you could have like killed it and stuff like that. But you know, um, and <laughs> there was, there was one part where I had actually, and I was really hoping you guys would have, would have came across it, but you didn't, but that's okay. But on the ground floor in the main entrance hall, I would have had not Steve just beating the ever loving fuck out of some vampire spot. Yes. <laughs> and, and you would have seen him like like missing an arm but and like a ballista bolt through him, just just like pounding a vampire spot in the mud. You're like, oh yeah, no, he's fine. <laughs> I'm so glad he made it too. I was actually kind of worried there for a minute. I mean, because I was like, I was like, eh, I could kill him, but I'm like, but it would be a lot cooler if like you know, like there's things happening in the castle. Like you sent not Steve out here. So naturally he's going to be, right. you know, fighting his way through. I mean, so it, it, you know, just, just, just a whole bunch of really cool ideas. Um, that being said, I did a lot of research <laughs> into spells before that. Cause I'm like, no, 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 no more just damaging spells. I need to really like turn the heat up on on these guys and stuff like that and i re- i need i need something that's like insidious and yeah. whatnot so yeah no uh, that was I, good I, man like i have i would have used that i would have been like yeah all the damage please like, yeah no i mean that that it, it was really tempting to just have a bunch of damaging spells so i'm like no 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 I need status effects too. Cause I yeah. don't ever use status effect spells. I don't ever. So I'm like, okay, we, we need to have more of that in there. And this is probably the first time I think since the first session I'm, and, and don't take this in a bad way, but I think this is the first time that I've dedicated the entire time of my free time solely prepping for this, you oh, know, cause they're, yeah. Fucking cause, show. Cause, Cause there were, cause there were times, I mean, there, you know, like there are some sessions like I already prepped ahead of time. So like, you know, my free time, I was like yeah. working on some other projects. Yeah, I mean, video games. I hope people expect us to like have other things to do. Like I don't expect yeah. it to be like only reading the book over and over again. But this was like, this was like, as I was eating dinner, I was like reading through the spells and stuff like that. And like, like, okay, the vampire can do this and yada, yada. So, and like, this is a X level spells. So like, you know, so I was like, I was like, no, no, no. I gotta fucking stick it. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, it was fucking epic. Yeah, it was great. How do you oh, feel? Uh, how do you feel having a uh, one full on campaign on, under your belt now? I it honestly it took. I told you like the next day like it gave me a lot of headaches, but I honestly feel a little sad that it's over. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like, like that bittersweetness. Like, oh man, I really enjoy doing this weekly thing. Yeah, then, like it's. It, it it was like a weird like empty nest syndrome <laughs> where it's like it's like you you gave me so much stress but I miss you. <laughs> so. Oh man, I'm gonna regret all of that. I'm pretty sure when I run the next game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and it felt it, but I don't know. It 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 honestly it took me a couple of days to for it to really sink in. I mean, because not only. Not only was it the first campaign I managed to do, but I, you know, I've been wanting to run this campaign for a yeah. long time, yeah. like, like ever since it came out and, and, uh, through like all the times that like we couldn't, yeah. like we've tried and it failed. We had a group before now, this group that we tried to do it with. Yeah, we, we had, we had, and you were there the entire time. <laughs> we actually <laughs> had, we actually had like a group and a half before this group. To, to try to play it and that fell apart and there was this me and curse of Strahd have like this weird history <laughs> 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 so now that it's finally behind me now now that now this book is no longer on the maybe pile it's a weird feeling you know it's yeah i mean do you feel accomplished i do okay but good because but... you haven't said that <laughs> You're oh like, no 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 like, I'm so I mean, sad, I... but i'm so glad I mean, I think I think that kind of goes without saying that I I feel like I've accomplished something, but still, it's just for the longest time I have just read that book and it just kind of got like this weird like window shopping mm-hmm. feeling, and now it's like I ran that campaign. I'm so glad you did, man, because like holy shit, I think ever since we started talking about D and D like in what 2014, yeah, is that safe? Um, you've been nonstop talking about Curse of Strahd, and you bought it, yeah. and you're like you're not gonna fucking run this one. 
Like, this yeah, is don't, you, don't you fucking do You yeah. can run every other adventure for this one's mine. Yeah. You leave it to me. Like, you got to remember so. when you got the book and you're like, you read the whole thing and like you keep telling me and then like you try to prepare the groups. And I'm like, yeah, you just look like a random, like look for some people online. I'll join you. Yeah. And and wait, because before that, it was just me and, and our friend Rico, right? Yep. And, and then I, I, was like, I, was, I was like, that's fine. I can run it for two people. I'll take what I can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that, <laughs> that, 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 you know, life happened and we couldn't continue playing that one. And then mm-hmm. it was with a bunch of randos from uh, from Reddit, right? Yeah, and all and really only one person ended up being kind of cool, <laughs> right? I mean, so. which is a gamble when you do like strangers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, I remember it being fun too while we were playing it. And then after that, you you kind of gave up. You were like, "Nah, man." Like I, I'm like you called it the curse of Strahd, like the you, curse of the curse of Strahd. Yeah, like you, <laughs> so. you were so fucking disappointed. Like you couldn't fucking get it of of because of, of the ground. Because it was always something because at that time I was working my pharmacy job and the hours were not set That's in true. stone. Yeah. So it was always something like, oh, yeah, let's play next Saturday. Oh, well, I have to fucking work all day Saturday or some crap like that. Right. So it was always like something it always worked against me or or like or when I did have the day off and and we had time to play something happened yep. <laughs> like like a personal family problem. I'm just like. Okay, yep. I'm just never going to be able to play this game. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it had it had to get to a point that I'm like, no, Wednesdays are mine. <laughs> just, you, we can do whatever the fuck you want on any other day, but Wednesdays are mine. <laughs> That's the mentality to have, man. When you have a D and D group, and I think most of us do. Like Wednesdays afternoons is D and D. Oh, us. it's a, it, it it's like it's like an unspoken rule now. But it's a, even. Even like Teresa has like kind of like semi explained to like her parents like yeah no he needs to be home mm-hmm. by six thirty because he has he has a game. Yep. Chris is the same <laughs> so, way with her family. She's like because like so. I'm usually streaming and I'm like hard to put her headphones on when she's like watching the TV and mm-hmm. when she gets a call she's like oh I can't talk right now because you know Jose is playing yeah. stupid Dungeons and Dragons I'm like yeah, I can hear you. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so but yeah I mean, no, like so, Wednesdays is like. Yeah, when you gotta be an adult. Now. You gotta schedule the time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, you will be there, fucker. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I don't I'm, have a lot of time. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I, this is this was my first campaign as a player, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot of like mainly. Oh, you want to talk about learning? <laughs> this was this was my first campaign as a DM, and like five sessions in, I'm like, um, oh, laying <laughs> over my head. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why did I pick? I could have just ran the fucking starter adventure. No, he fucking like jumped that. into Curse's Trot. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying I regret it, but yes, I jumped into the deep end. When Dude, that's the best that, adventure. That's the best way to fucking learn. That's how it was for me. Is in, uh, it? it is. Because now you're going to run other adventures. You're like, oh, pff, I already done something similar to this. Because, mm. like, I jumped straight to, true. I jumped straight to fucking uh, uh, Storm King's Thunder. Which is the most open-ended Ooh. campaign possible, with like five different ways of going about it. No, like when you and it's when nothing is set in the, stone, and it was just the whole. It, it, some people say that it should have been called um, uh, the Sword Coast Companion Part Two because like it just has like all the information of the Sword Coast, and it's just massive. Oh. And I jumped on that at, right after like the starter set, and I remember dude the whole time we're like, oh my god. <laughs> but so, then after that I i'm guess, like fuck it i can run whatever the hell i want i guess i guess it's pretty normal to feel like you're in over your head most of the time yeah you I, the I one mean, thing you have to remember is that the players don't know that you're exactly. over your head that's it and you that's, have that in your mind you're, it's fine and that's that's honestly that was one of the things that i had to like come to terms with was that because i had read this book ad nauseum like mm-hmm. to the point that i'm like okay i know what's going to happen here but then I'm like, but wait a minute, the players don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen here. So then so then it became not so much like me figuring out what happens in these in this book, but looking for the reactions of the players yep. kind of a thing. Yep. So, yeah. So there so there were certain parts that like I took a little bit of delight in because the players like <gasps> or some shit like that. And then like it kind of blew them away. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the best feeling, dude. But yeah, not just, yeah. just got to keep that in mind, man. We don't know what the fuck is happening behind the screen. I, I, I guess the best way to explain it is like being a DM after being a player for so long is being the guy that buys birth uh, Christmas presents as opposed to getting like getting them, yep. you know, 
So yeah. then you're like, yay, open it. I can't wait for you to open yeah. the present. Uh, it's a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> That's what you always wanted. <laughs> yeah. No, so. but I had a blast as a player. And I'm, I, I guess I'm used to like short campaigns, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because technically the only thing I've played like um, as a player is like short stuff. So having the campaign itself and like keeping track of all the things that we've seen and all the names and all the places and all the, uh, uh, ac- not activities, uh, events that happen and like all the things we're supposed to keep track of made me appreciate note taking. Yes. You know, like hardcore. <laughs> That's why I made that Trello and like try to start putting as much information in there as possible. Because as a DM, I have all the information in front of me, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, like yeah. now I know how to deliver that information better for the player. Do not mm-hmm. get too confused. Because I, I was like, oh, I, the, the, I guess when I was DMing, there was a lot of, like, me assuming the player will catch certain things. Right. You know? But now I know. It's like, well, it, sometimes it's just not that clear, you know? Yeah. And I it, there was definitely a lot of learning as as so far as me communicating certain things um, and also not communicating certain That's things. That's the tricky one. <laughs> that, sometimes I'm like, they ask me questions and I'm like, Hold on a minute. I want to make sure that I have to read this so I don't give you the more information than what you're asking. Because mm-hmm. I've done that before and I hate it because I'm like, they don't yeah. realize it. I give the information, but I'm like, wait, that's not what they ask. Yeah. And I give them more than, oh, shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, so, I mean, there there has definitely been some times where I'm like, okay, hold on, give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like reading the book, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, we finished Christmas Trot and now um, we are taking a two weeks break. And we're gonna have our first curse of str- I mean, curse of str- oh, We're gonna have our first curse of str- adventure in the. No! <laughs> Surprise, Andrew, we're doing it again. <laughs> no! Let me out! <laughs> uh, no, the next campaign we're actually diving into is uh, uh, Descent into Avernus, or more uh, more clearly, uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Okay. Which so I'm gonna be DMing. I, mean. I have to ask because my ego needs it. If you can pin down one. Like one highlight of Curse of Strahd, what would it be? Like the best moment of Curse of Strahd. One highlight. Because I know what the worst moment is. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I know what the worst moment of Curse of Strahd is. <laughs> so I think pretty unanimously what the worst moment was outside of like Roll 20 technical crap. I so. think for me, the funniest. No. Oh man, there were so many. I just had a blast with all the fucking events. I think, <laughs> I think for me it was when, <laughs> when Vesemir turned evil for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was my highlight, mainly because of a, a couple of things. Just the, the, the whole like chemistry between Vesemir and the rest of the party in game, but also me as a player learning to actually fucking uh, embrace a different, completely different way of playing. I think that was like, the highlight like that whole amber temple was just fucking phenomenal because i thought you were gonna, i thought you were gonna talk about the part where you try to push the statue over. no exactly that's what i'm saying like i can't just pinpoint that but like after i became evil i, I didn't just became evil but also extremely obnoxious <laughs> i annoyed the shit out of a lich <laughs> The the ver you can pinpoint the exact moment I regret my decision making you evil, and that was when you smack that wizard and almost kill him, and you could see on the stream I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> just I'm like now I have to live with this for the rest of the campaign. Yeah. I think I think for me the Amber Temple will be the highlight. That was the a- Amber Temple was awesome. I was so looking forward to the Amber Temple. The Amber Temple, uh, I think, was really good. Like, I feel like uh, uh, Castle Driven Love as a dungeon was not as as cool. It was mainly just yeah. like, oh, okay, you're just gonna fight Strahd. That, that's what you're here for. That was pretty much mm-hmm. it. Um, but the Amber Temple, not knowing what it was, almost dying like four times, you know, like finding all this weird shit. Like, I think that was just the greatest moment. Well, I think I think it's because like going into Castle Ravenloft, you kind of know what to expect. Right. Like it's going to be it's, it's going to be like Castlevania D and D edition. Yeah, but yeah. the Amber Temple is like the entire time, like, ooh, what's up there? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So yeah. Second, second, second place will always be the fucking uh, Baron when we when we when we were trying to trick him <laughs> and like sneak into his house. That was that was oh, the best. Oh, I re- I. <laughs> 
that, that reminded me of when I was like, man, I miss it when you guys were like low level and vulnerable. <laughs> and stuff like that. You After the Ammo so, Temple, there was no going back. <laughs> you guys, you guys were so precious because you, you, you actually had threats to deal with. Yeah. Stuff like that. What, was, what was the worst moment that you were saying? The Scarecrow fight. Why was that worst moment? That because was scary was like as hell. Huge, it was it was like a huge slog. Oh, I can see that. But I didn't yeah. see it as a slog. I was just like, holy shit, we kinda have to get the fuck out of here. Oh, but like, you okay. know, I, I, I don't think I don't think there was ever like a moment that I was like, oh I fucking hate this, this kill me. Other than there, roll twenty technicalities. Well, yeah, no, that that besides that. But no, like after the scarecrow fight, because I because I remember I was actually I was actually talking to Teresa about that before. And I was like, okay, I can either do the scarecrows or I was going to bring like Kirill back and he was going to bring like a bunch of like, like werewolves, like for revenge and stuff. And, and Teresa's like, oh, you should do the werewolves. That sounds really cool. And I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that kind of thing. Cause I was still kind of like planning on like having Carol come back. And then, and then after that session, like I just laid down in bed. I'm like, and I, I said, I said out loud, I should have brought back those fucking werewolves. <laughs> 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 oh man and she's like you did the scarecrows did you <laughs> and i'm like yeah she's like was it fun i'm like no, <laughs> no maybe not for not. you but I, I had fun i remember i remember it that's the good thing i don't, I don't remember it in a bad way either but yeah anyways yeah. we are running out of time so essentially is there anything else you want to say about curses tried no it's done leave, leave it in the past let it die do you do you think you got a dm again or are you still in that like i don't want to touch i don't right want to be behind the screen anymore right now no <laughs> i just I, I i have had my fill of dming maybe maybe in the future but right now i'm just like <laughs> right, there right now there's a reason why i'm taking a two-week break yeah yeah <laughs> so you fucking weaklings it's 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 like a it, it's it's weird it's like a vacation away from my own hobby <laughs> <laughs> so. i love the fa- i love i love the fact how like how my brain works the first like two episodes of, of a talk about maturity was like Oh man, you know it's really important to take a break right after a session, like after a big campaign, because like blah 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 blah. And we just finished. Right? I'm like, okay, we're gonna play next week, guys. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, God, no, dude, give me some time. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that all of you guys were like, nah, dude, like let's just take a two week break because I would have fucking burned myself again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would I learned, have. I learned nothing. <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh, any any other news? Anything else on the D and D world? No, nothing, nothing quite yet. I was checking uh, Dragon Plus for any new update on Rhyme of the Frostman, and I mean, they're just kind of talking about like the design of the snowy owl, uh, snowy owl bear. But besides that, nothing new. No, not yet. At the not yet. Least. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna hit. Uh, yeah. Soon enough, because the holiday yeah. is coming. Um, yeah. So but yes, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, sorry about the weird break without announcement, uh, but we're back. Um, yeah, life, life happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you for listening. If you want to listen to more of our episodes, we are available in uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that you, you listen to your podcast online. Uh, we're also live uh, every Wednesdays on Twitch. We are starting. Not us, right now. We are starting back up again on September 2nd because we're taking yeah. a quick break. Um, not I, right now. Though. I may I may stream some gaming uh, next Wednesday. Maybe not. Um, yeah, video games. Um, but after September 2nd, we are going to do. Uh, I'm sorry. September 2nd, we're going to do uh, Descent into Everness. Don't miss out on Session Zero. It's going to be great. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna that's going to be a, a I'm gonna make, Session Zero, right? Yeah. I want to make you guys roll for your stats. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yeah. No! I was actually, like, hoping for the standard. Right? No, we're not doing standard. We're going to mix this up. We're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do it live, and we're going to talk about all this stuff. So you guys are welcome to join us. Um you're gonna make me roll for my stats and my my health this yes. is hell <laughs> <laughs> it's also very hot like florida okay yeah uh, but you guys have a good night uh keep on gaming and uh we'll see you next we'll see you in two weeks <laughs> we'll see you when we see you. we'll see you when <laughs> we see you and by seeing i mean you'll listen to our beautiful yeah whatever what now in stereo, in like, stereo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right you guys have a good night <laughs>